Hello friends, welcome to Testing Shala YouTube channel. In this video, I want to talk about in detail what are the best practices you should perform or you should follow. What are the best practices you should follow when you are performing user acceptance testing. Before proceeding further to understand what are those best practices, if you have visited String Shala YouTube channel for the first time, then please click on subscribe and bell notification so that all our future videos related to software testing will be in your inbox that would help you to enhance your software testing skills so let's not wait then proceed let us proceed further to understand what are the best practices which we need to follow when we are performing user acceptance testing so the important best practices I'm going to list down every activity. This is best practices are nothing but a checklist which we need to follow when you are performing UIT. So UIT is normally performed by the business analyst or it would be done by uh, the client itself or end users. So let us go by one by one best practices which we need to follow when you are performing UIT. The first thing here is we need to validate the need of the user acceptance testing. Not every project is having a requirement to perform the user acceptance testing. Again, it needs to be validated with the stakeholders like end users or business users or a product management just to validate them whether there is a real requirement of UAT phase. If they say there is a need of performing UIT then the next things will move on where we will have to clearly define what are the things we should do in UIT that is where the first step will come into picture to validate whether UIT is really required for your project or not let's say if they say if yes it is required then we should identify the stakeholders who is going to perform the UIT we should uh, work with the stakeholders and understand who is going to perform UIT. Normally, UIT will be performed by the end users or clients, right? Only the support we should provide from the testing team to the end users or uh, customers in terms of the en environment readiness, all the informations we should provide them and also you should set up a regular meetings with them to get the status as well as help them on any issues. So that is the second thing we should do as part of UAT. Then uh, you should also understand what is the requirement which we need to test as part of UAT. So once we requirements are clear, UAT requirements are clear, normally in agile, proje agile projects every user story will have acceptance criteria needs to be documented in the user story document and that would that would suffice as a requirement to perform UAT. The next uh, important uh, item which we, we should validate is identifying the testing scope and objectives. So what are the things we are going to test as part of UAT? That also we need to clearly identify and define the right best practices right for the identifying of the testing scope what are the if once we identify everything needs to be documented that including the objectives the next step here is you should understand what is there any requirement for test data when you are performing UAT the next thing here is once the scope is clear when the data is clear we should come up with the testing approach what all the different types of uh, testing we will be performing against the requirements which are shared as part of the business requirement so once the approach is defined we should also define the defect management process especially because when business users or end users when they start logging issues you should have mechanism to track these defects and also a mechanism to triage these issues in a regular meeting so that 
including development team, testing team, together they'll come and work with the end users or business uh, users to understand what kind of issue they logged and what kind of support or clarification is required so that developer can fix the issues as quickly as possible. That is the need of trade meetings. That is one. And also we should align few testers to the business team so that they will be in regular in touch with the business team to help them out if, in case if they find out any issue or challenges when executing UAT tests. The next thing we should look into here is the test scenario to be executed and also we should come up with the right communication plan which we already discussed to have a regular connect with the stakeholders and we should define the test environments. What kind of environments that UIT is going to perform. This is also be another checklist or a best practices we should follow when you are performing in UIT. Then we should have cleared defining of test schedule test schedule and you should also clearly document are we making any assumptions or any constraints is there when you are performing UAT or any dependencies is there for the business users or end users so that we can document all those things and start working on solving those issues and again identifying the issues and risks and we should also should have a best practices of having a status reports that helps business users or end users to send status reports on regular basis so that everybody will be in the same page and there should also be a mechanism of defining the acceptance criteria and sign off this is the last uh, aspect and very important aspect needs to be taken care because if you are not defining this item properly then there is no end to it will be keep doing testing right there is a there should be an end to the testing that is where we are going to clearly define in acceptance criteria testing activities are completed and if if it is meeting this criteria then business users and end users are going to sign off saying that things developer have implemented is working as expected and business users and end users also need to release this product into the production environment. So once the sign off is done then we will have to document the lesson learned document so that this will be very useful when you are performing next level of UAT. I hope you understood uh, the nitty gritties of UAT, what are the things we should perform in UAT and what are the best practices we should follow when we are putting a UAT plan. If you are watching this video then please click on like button and if you have visited Testing Shala YouTube channel for the first time then please click on subscribe and bell notification. The All our future videos related to software testing will be in your inbox that would help you to enhance your software testing skills. Thanks for watching this video. Bye for now. Take care.